Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to learn how to do multiple cascading combo boxes, up to five of them. But you can do as many as you want with the same technique. I'm going to show you up to five. Now, one of my more popular videos is my cascading combo boxes video. That's where I show you two boxes. In the first box, you pick the state, and then it will cascade the second box, so it'll only show you cities from that state, All right? So it's basically one box that gets its values from another one, okay? Well, of course, one of the most popular questions I get is, well, how do I do more? How do I do country, state, city, or country, city, state, street, and all that stuff? So today, we're gonna do a five-level example, five tiers, right? Country, state, county, city, and street. Now, I'm leaving off some things like zip code, because you can just type in the zip code, and I've got whole other videos on how you can do zip code lookups and stuff like that. Street number will be a different field, okay? Uh, there's lots of different reasons why you might want to do something like this if you just care about like demographic regions or whatever. But the, the actual fields are not the point. The point is I'm going to show you how to do five cascading combo boxes in a row. So if you've got like product category, looking up products, looking up descriptions, whatever. Okay, get it? All right. Now, the first example, we just used queries in the previous video, all right? So that was basically an expert level video. In fact, this video was before I was even doing the beginner expert developer thing. But we needed one little tiny bit of VBA code just to force the cascade to happen. But all the data come from, came from a query, okay? So today we're taking it up a notch. This will be a developer level video. We're not gonna use queries. We're going to use just straight SQL and VBA. So it's a little more advanced. So let's take a look at our prerequisites for today's class. First up, of course, if you haven't watched my previous Cascading Combo Boxes video, go watch this first. Also watch my video on nested subforms. This is how we're going to initially set up the data, right? Countries, states, counties, and so on. We're gonna do five levels of nested subforms. It's gonna look like this, this guy back here. Here, let me show you. Ready? Yeah, this is PowerPoint. It's gonna look like this, okay? All right, go back there, okay. If you're not too familiar with VBA, well, go watch my intro to VBA video first, about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. If you need to brush up on your SQL with access, go watch this. We're not doing anything too complicated, but we are gonna make a basic SQL statement, a select from where order by. All right, this is important. Make sure you understand if then statements, the on current event, the after update event, how to get a value from an open form, the on open event, and there's probably gonna be some more. These are just some, some to start with. This is gonna probably be a couple of videos, so I'll, I'll point you to more lessons if you need them as we're going along. Oh, and for sure, this goes without saying, you should definitely have a good handle on relationships, one to many specifically for these examples, but uh, obviously relating values between different tables is gonna be crucial. These are all free videos. They're on my website, they're on my YouTube channel. If any of that stuff seemed Greek to you, well, unless you're from Greece, of course, then go watch those videos so you understand that stuff before continuing with this series, all right? Okay, here we go. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to, but you can do this stuff in any database. I don't think anything that I'm doing is really specific to this, except we are gonna use my customer form and put those fields in here that we talked about. Before we get to the customer form though, let's set up all of our data. Now, I'm gonna set up the tables that we need to do all of our cascades. And I'm gonna, we're gonna set them up together so no one complains that how'd you do that. Sometimes when I skip steps, people complain. I would rather have people not be lost if I skip steps, assuming that you know something, right? Rather than other people be, well, why are you taking so much time on this? Well, if you don't like it, you can fast forward, okay? I don't wanna lose anybody, my goal is to teach so you can play it on 2x speed if you want to. But we're gonna create a bunch of supporting tables first. All right, country, state, county, city, street. are all gonna be tables. Because one's gonna rely on another. All right, so we're gonna create the country table first. Country ID. And I strongly recommend you stick with my naming conventions. Because some of the code we're gonna use later depends on this. Okay? And they're good naming conventions. They're my naming conventions. <laughs> country ID. And then country name, not just name, never use just name with the reserved word. That's all we need in this one. Save it, country T, 
Primary key, yup, and let's put in some data. I'll just put in a few sample records. All right, we got the United States. We got Canada. We got the United Kingdom. We got France. We got Germany. We got Mexico. All right, that's enough. Put in as many as you want. But now, keep an eye on what these IDs are because that we're going to need that for the next step. Okay, save that. Now it's time for the state table. Now I know it's not called state in other countries. Canada calls them provinces, for example, but just bear with me, okay? If you want to name it something different, feel free to name it something different. You can do little tricks later on where you can have like a list for each country, what they call their states or their geographical divisions or whatever. And I've actually built databases before where, you know, for customers, uh, for clients of mine that had customers in both, let's say US and Canada, and it would, if it was a Canadian customer, it, it knew to flip it to province. So that's all, those are all embellishments you can add later. It's all the basic same stuff. So create table design. All right, and this one, we got states. So it's gonna be the state ID. That's our auto number. Now we need to know what country this state is from. So country ID, that's a number of type long integer. That's our foreign key. And then a state name. Save that as the state table. Okay, and let's put some sample data in. So now we got to know what the countries are for each of our states. Now we're going to make forms to do this later, but for now we're going to type in the IDs ourselves. Okay, so United States, we'll do Florida. We'll do New York. We'll do California. California. And then we'll do some Canadian, some Ontario. We'll do Quebec or Quebec, I believe you guys pronounce it, and then Alberta. Correct me if I'm wrong. All right, save it. Now we can close the country T, move this guy up here. All right, and now we can make the next table, which is gonna be our county table. And yes, I know in Canada, you guys don't always call them counties. You got some different rules up there, but again, same kind of thing. So again, create, table design. We've got our county. ID, don't confuse county with country. I did this a few times when I was building my uh, my prototype. <laughs> so state ID, that's our number, that's our foreign key. County name, and that's gonna be short text. Save it, county T. All right, some sample data. Come on. So again, just a few records. Now this is the state ID over here. So we're gonna go with Florida. I live in Lee County. There's also Collier County to my south and Charlotte County to my north. Let's go up to uh, New York. I used to live in Erie County there. There's also Genesee County and Niagara County. Niagara County. Everyone always spells that wrong. It's Niagara, right? Uh, let's, do, um, let's do some from Canada. So from Ontario, which is state ID four, skipping California. We also have a Niagara County or whatever you guys call it. <laughs> we have a Toronto. Toronto, from what I read, is both a county and a city. It's like the city is its own county, which is kind of cool. It's a, what do you guys call it? A geo, political geographic division or something like that. And then uh, Hamilton, same deal. Hamilton used to have its own county. I was re when I was doing research for this, I was reading about it. It was, fan it was, uh, it was uh, fascinating. It used to have a county name, and then they merged it with something else, and now it's just Hamilton and blah, blah, blah. All right, this is, this is access, learning access and Rick's weird trivia, too. So, okay, we got, we got counties done. We can close the state table, slide this guy up. Now we'll make our city table. So create, table design. We got city ID, auto number. And again, repetition is good here, folks. All right, a county ID that the city's in. That's our number, our foreign key. City name. Save this as the city T. All right, let's put some cities in. What do we got? Let's see here. All right, so again, I'll stick with uh, Lee County. We got Fort Myers. We got uh, Cape Coral, which is where I live now. We've got Benita. Now, this is one of those interesting situations where Benita Springs... Most of it's in Lee County, but some of it's in Collier County. 
It's where a city spans multiple counties. That happens. So I would put one in each of those, right? And of course, we got Naples. We got beautiful Marco Island. Uh, let's go up north. We've got in Erie County, we've got Buffalo. We've got Hamburg, where I was born and raised. Well, I was born in Buffalo, raised in Hamburg. Then we've got, uh, let's go to Amherst, where I lived most of my life. Let's go up to uh, 8. Toronto has Toronto, the city. We've got Hamilton, the city. And we've got, um, we've got Niagara Falls, the city, inside of Niagara County. <laughs> so we'd need another one here. One in New York, one in Ontario. I just looked it up. In Niagara Falls, Ontario, it's called the Regional Municipality of Niagara which is essentially the Niagara region, Ontario, Canada. So isn't uh, government and, and divisions like this interesting? I think so. It's like Sheldon Cooper's fun with flags. I used to love flags. In fact, I used to play trivia every week at this place. And uh, usually at the end of the night, they had a flag, a world flag, and you had to guess it and you could like double your points. And so I built a database to study world flags. I had them all down. I knew most of them for a while. Forgot them all, but... <laughs> It's one of the reasons I got flag badges on my website. I love flags. All right, we got our tables all set. Save changes, yes. We got our country, state, county, city. Oh, we need our street. We gotta set up our streets. How can I forget the streets? Let's bring cities back. I thought we were done. See, when I get gabbing with you guys, I forget stuff. All right, so one more table. Create table design. We've got our street ID, our city. ID, that's our foreign key. I know I'm repeating it, but you'll learn, right? Okay, save it. We got uh, street table. Now, when it comes to streets, I like to put street, if you're doing something like this, you'd put street name in its own field. If you're, if you're getting this I, you know, exact with the addresses, and then we'll have a street number as a separate field. And I personally like to put, whether it's a, a street, boulevard, avenue, drive, parkway, all that, I put that as part of the street name. Because here, for example, in Cape Coral, we've got, you know, you, you might have Northeast First Street. You also have a Northeast First Lane, Northeast First Drive, and so on. So those are all individual streets. At least that's how I figure it out. So, for example, here we've got in Fort Myers, we've got uh, McGregor. Boulevard, we've got a Colonial, Boulevard, lots of Boulevards, <laughs> Metro, Parkway, you can spell those out if you want to, but. Uh, Cape Coral, we've got a Pine Island Road, we've got a Santa Barbara Boulevard, we've got a Cape Coral Parkway, and then we got those weirdly named streets which are most of them. And the interesting thing in Cape Coral is that we have more canals than any city, I think in the world, more miles of canals, including even uh, Venice, Italy. But uh, our, our, our roads will be, will be divided by a canal. Like you'll be driving down first terrace, let's say, and then it'll stop and there's a canal there. And then first terrace will continue on the other side of the canal. But you've got to go all the way around. <laughs> Right, like here, look, right, there's, there's Northwest 13th Terrace, right? And it continues, it continues, it, continues, it stops, and then it continues over here. Here's Northwest 13th. Whoever, whoever designed this, I got no idea, but this is all over the city is like this. I don't know what they did before GPS. So you got stuff like, you know, you got uh, Northwest 13th Terrace, and you might have Northwest 13th Road, and then Northwest 13th Street, and so on, right? It's just, it's nuts. Move that over here. All right, and then we got, uh, let's go up north again. We got um, City 9, which is Amherst, where I used to live. We got a Sheridan Drive. We've got a Niagara Falls Boulevard in Amherst that goes to Niagara Falls. <laughs> and then we've got a Miller's Port Highway. All right, good enough. Now we've got all of our tables set up. We've got some sample data in them. We're ready to make our forms so that we can do data entry nice and easily without having to rely on these tables. 
and we'll do that in tomorrow's video. So tune in tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. Or if you're a member, you can watch it right now because I'm going to record a whole bunch of these today. I'm leaving tomorrow for the MVP Summit up in uh, Redmond, Washington. So I'm going to be gone all week. So I'm preparing the series while I'm gone so for you to enjoy. And if you're a member, you can enjoy it all right now. If not, we'll see you tomorrow. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.